guys. All right, part three. I'm coming to you from the car this time. Let me see if I can fix the camera. Hold on. It's not too bad for you guys. This is just a spontaneous decision. Anyway, yeah, I think in the last video I was saying that I just did a nine hour operation. And luckily it was very successful. So, um, yeah, I was thankful to all the doctors and stuff who did that for me. Yeah, but at the same time, even though everything went well in that department, they couldn't tell me if I would ever be able to recover any of my mobility or anything I've lost. So they were just saying you have to give it time to heal. It's one of the slowest healing parts of your body, I guess, is your spine. So it takes a while. Um, yeah, so that was kind of scary because then I was wondering, oh my God, who's going to like me? You know, like who's going to care about me being in the wheelchair? Because nothing has ever, I've never broken a bone in my body before. So this was like a whole new world for me. I have not been in a hospital since birth for any kind of emergency. So, um, yeah, I was kind of scared. But at the same time, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And my ex-girlfriend at the time was there for me the whole way broke up like six months before the accident and when she found out I was in the accident she flew to Jamaica she was on the air ambulance with me back to Florida and in the hospital with me for at least two weeks and I really appreciate that you know so I had a lot of support a lot family friends and everyone who was there for me during that time I appreciate it and if you're watching thank you so much I don't want you to think I didn't appreciate everything you did for me in that time so yeah I'm grateful for that so anyway yeah so at the same time my ex who was there with me looked at me and said Dean what did you do to yourself and I was saying the same thing I really don't know you know but then at the same time it was like you know what well this has happened what are you gonna do now they don't know what how I'm going to heal or what's gonna be possible because at that time I couldn't even move anything below my nipple level. Like below here, nothing. I couldn't even push my stomach out. I would talk, talk, talk until I just ran out of breath and I just couldn't talk because I had to, it was so hard to inhale. So that was a rough period because I was in the hospital for two months, yeah. I think I said that before. But anyway, so when I was in the hospital now, I was like, oh my God, she's right. What did I do to myself, you know? And then, when I went into therapy for the first time and I saw other people who were injured and whatever ailments or issues they had, I was like, holy crap. Because I've never been around anybody sick or injured or um, disabled or anything before. So it was a whole new world for me and I saw a lot of quadriplegics, I saw people missing like limbs. I saw people missing like half of their body. And when I was in there and I saw other things that other people had to go through, you always think that this is the worst thing that can happen to you, but you're so wrong. There's so much worse. And at that moment when I was in therapy, I looked around at everyone and I said, you know what? I'm not gonna complain. Why? It's not going to change anything. So me getting depressed doesn't help. So I didn't even, I don't even think I was ever really depressed. I mean, I was like sad about what happened. Definitely, you know, I mean, who wouldn't be? But depressed, I never think I ever got into a depressed moment. And I think that's mainly because I wanted to stay strong for my family. Because if I was not like taking it well, I don't think, they would know what to do you know especially being not able to do anything about it in the first place so one of my um, mottos in life is you know don't cry over spilled milk because <laughs> it's spilled it's out of the glass there's nothing you can do it, that's just it so you just have to move on with what you have and that's what I decided to do 
So I said, okay, you know what? Let me just see what I can get back and not worry about what I had. So that was my, the beginning of my new life because I couldn't live the life I lived before. And honestly, I don't want to live the life that I lived before. Because even though, I, yeah, I had a lot of fun and I was very selfish and it was all about me and um, uh, not that I was an awful person, but I don't like the person I was. I didn't treat people how they deserve to be treated and I just, yeah, I have a lot of, I did a lot of thinking, like being about who I was and how I was and what I want to be and then just set new goals and just start my life all over again because it is a whole new world and you're not going to have all the friends you had before when you can't do the same things that you could do with them then eventually you drift apart and that's just life but I guess that's it. whether something happens to you or not people just go in different directions sometimes but yeah so anyway I decided not to get depressed I just did my therapy push myself ended up going to Cuba believe it or not because the therapy I was trying to get I couldn't get it here for some reason they wanted to just teach me to be independent in the wheelchair but what happened was after a month in the hospital um, I used to have to wear these compression stockings right and um, my brother was there with me the whole time and he used to like help me change and do all that kind of stuff and one day he was taking off one of the stockings off and I stretched my toes you know like when you take your socks off or your shoes and you like wiggle your toes and stuff so I did that and he was like Dean did you move your toes I was just like well yeah but yeah, it, it, it did, did it move <laughs> yeah and I just and I, from then I just got my, my toes on the right leg and I could just start just out of nowhere just control it I never and that was the little motivation I needed to keep pushing. So by the time I was finished in the hospital after two months, I had I could feel all the muscles on my right side. Like I could like control them properly and stuff. On the left, zero. And I'm left footed just to let you know when I play football, well, soccer here, but where I'm from we call it football. I'm left footed, that's my, my strong leg. But so it was even weird for me to have power in my right leg and I couldn't do anything with the left it was very you feel off balance but you know I mean besides up uh, besides the injury and what happened well there's my neighbor um, I said to myself I'm going to do this therapy I ended up going to Cuba to do an intensive therapy there and I was there for three months or tres meses as they said and um, I worked out eight hours a day, six days a week. I was there for two months the first time though. And I lost 40 pounds in two months without trying to lose weight. I wasn't even trying to lose weight. That's how intense this workout is. Um, I worked out from, yeah, eight hours a day, six days a week. So it was crazy and I loved it. It was intense. Not everybody could accomplish what their goals were for each day, but those who could, which were very few, and I was one of them. We got a lot of results, and that's where they got me at least. Before I could even like stand fully or fully um, put weight on my right leg, they would put like braces on and teach me how to walk. Well, there's pictures and stuff, so if you guys are really interested, I can show you pictures from there. And they teach you how to walk again, use your hips if you can't use your legs. And I seen them do so many things there, and. And that just motivates me when I see people trying to help you to get back something you get back some kind of life some kind of independence you have to appreciate those things so yeah Cuba was a amazing experience and they got me walking with the walker by the time by the time I came back and I still had to wear a brace on the left leg but the right leg I had nothing on it and I felt good at that time but then things got a little complicated because to stay in Cuba, of course, there's no insurance that covers that. So I have to pay like almost $8,000 a month, I think it was, for the therapy and board and everything there. But And it's rough because I don't even speak Spanish. So that was, a, that was an incredible experience. But we can talk more about that. I can tell you some stories about Cuba for sure, but later on. But yeah, eventually I got up walking with the walker and stuff. So 
but to be honest with you, I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I'll be like fully normal and running around and like playing soccer again or football, <laughs> you know, none of that stuff. So that's the sad part because I did like to play sports, but you can find other things to entertain yourself. There's this is a there's a lot of things to do in this world. So yeah, that's the story after about the hospital and about the time that I had to motivate myself to just push on. And I mean, I had support and I had a friend, a, a friend who was there for me a lot, who really helped me a lot and I can't leave him out of this. His name is Robert Howell and he was in a wheelchair before me and I remember him being there every single day with me in therapy to help me get through it. And I just want to tell him I appreciate everything you did and I will never forget it. And if you want to know who he is, he has his um, Instagram, he has a wheelchair awareness thing where he sells t-shirts, all that stuff. You guys should support him. His name is Wheelie One Locks. You can find him on Instagram and yeah, Instagram mainly and, and probably Facebook too. And probably on, on TikTok. So look out for Wheelie One Locks. Okay, tell him I sent you there. So anyway, yeah, he really helped me a lot through it and yeah, that has been my life. Even though I know I won't be normal again, at least I can find a way to be very independent. And one thing I realized, guys, if you're in a, if you have a disability or you're in a wheelchair or whatever the case is, um, exercise helps a lot. Because the stronger you are, the easier everything else. And I think you guys should really try and focus on like, and besides it just being healthy for you overall. Because not every day you're gonna feel good, but when you get it used to exercising and then you don't do it, you realize then that um, you don't feel good. You feel the difference. And especially if you have an injury like mine, every little ounce of strength or less, less of strength, I can feel the difference. So guys, exercise, trust me on that one. So we'll just shut off here because I don't want to bore you guys for too long, but just want to motivate you and just let you know you can overcome anything and you're stronger than all your excuses, okay? So let's do it. Other people out there have it worse, so don't complain and just do what you have to do. That's just life. Nobody gets more than they can handle. So I'll talk to you all in the next one. Take care.